There was even a story of a pack of Russian squirrels ganging up on a stray dog and eviscerating the canine alive. Each Excuse me? A pack of, uh, a wild pack of squirrels ganged a dog in one? Keep me far away from those squirrels, dog. I ain't gonna lie. All right, we got some casual geographic. This is the one rule of nature school never taught you. Let's watch it. Hello? That scared me, bro. When I first seen this. You have been consistently lied to your entire life. And the biggest source of some of the most unprovoked lies is school. School okay. really told us that this dude in 92 discovered America, that quicksand and giant Venus flytraps were way more of an issue than they ended up being. That writing- Bruh, bruh, bruh. I ain't gonna lie. Facts. Boy, I was, I was, I was scared of Venus flytraps and, and it's quicksand, bro. Bruh, I was actually like really genuinely afraid of quicksand. Quicksand, I mean. A gen genuine fear. For that shit to be nothing. Being in cursive was the only way you'd ever be taken seriously. And my personal favorite, whenever a teacher would Bro, say- Bro, oh my god, yes, this cursive bullshit. This cursive bull- They forced cursive on us, bro. Niggas had to do cursive every morning. What do I use that for? Nothing. This won't slide in college. Whole time, your calculus professor at 5 p.m. can end up your beer pong partner by 11. But there's one mistruth that insists on being spread, and before we get to that, Story time. So back in the 70s, ornithologists noticed something pretty disturbing, even for them. Fola is a remote island over 200 miles off Scotland, and for generations, migratory birds, specifically Arctic terns and one of the ops of Happy Feet, the skewer, use it as nesting grounds to raise their chicks. And a group of ornithologists noticed a gruesome trend of chicks with pretty graphic injuries. Some chicks look like they had a leg or two ripped off. Damn. Or others the same, but with their wings. Some chicks even had their heads divorced from their body, for sure irreconcilable. And Damn. while some of the chicks somehow survived being mutilated, scientists had no idea what was causing this sudden rise in amputweeties. At first they used otters even hedgehogs, but it turned out to be neither. You want to know what it was? I promise you, you'll never guess it. I'll even give you a chance to try. Comment what you think. Mm. I feel like it's probably like the cutest thing on the planet. Ma yeah, maybe, maybe other birds. I bet you're wrong. Or, or it's maybe it's maybe it might be a bug, some oh, type of bug. The answer, sheep. What the yeah. fuck? The fuck you mean a sheep? What the fuck was a sheep? What the? What do you mean a sheep? Sheep. Scientists observed grazing sheep stumble across a defenseless chicken without a second thought or really even much of a prequel, grab them and eat them. Sometimes a sheep would snap off a leg for a premature drumstick. Other times they might grab one by the head and initiate a permanent separation. Swallowing skull and all whole. From 1973 to 1980, nearly 700 baby birds have been victimized by the business end of a carnivorous Q-tip. Oh my scale, God! That's only carnivorous Q-tip is crazy. Birds born in that time. Then again, nobody expected sheep to be involved in foul play, and that goes back to those lies I told you about. So in science class, we were taught this rule: herbivores eat plants carnivores eat meat and those with culinary commitment issues are called omnivores okay and for a lot of us that's where it ended but of course nature's more complicated than that what? it's like a spectrum and on one end you have obligate herbivores okay and they're obligated to eat just plants or starve to death here you got animals like koalas sloths and the dead-eyed plush toy the bear cuz cuz okay then you have the same concept but obligate carnivores like cats of every kind and smack in the middle are your omnivores but there's also facultatives, and basically that means most of the time you'll find them at one end, but every once in a while they'll borrow a meal plan from the other side. Mm. Polar bears are hyper carnivores, with most of their calories coming from seals. But rarely they'll switch it up to berries, seaweed, moss, and even straight up grass. Huh. Which makes them facultative carnivores, and not an obligate like a lion. Okay. And since we're already on bears, pandas are a good example of facultative herbivores. I promise Wait, it's gonna- I thought, I thought pandas only ate bamboo get less complicated but the yin yang yogi's defining personality trait is being a bamboo merchant but every once in a while they surprise us like when this panda was caught in 4k eating a past tense wildebeest oh my god jockey chased caught murked and ate a peacock oh my god pikas, that's a pika so even though most of what goes down its gullet is bamboo protein in the form of meat is never really off the table which makes them facultative herbivores and they're not the only ones almost the opposite almost every herbivore you can think of is actually facultative even the ones you wouldn't expect that's how the good vibes vegan aqua blimp 
has also been known to snag fish from nets for themselves. Oh my god. The normally vegetarian shell jockey the tortoise turning a rabbit carcass into a cookout. They've also been known to plot. They was hit. Nah, they was gang banging that fucking rabbit. Oh my god. Turning a rabbit carcass. Bro, that shit is getting getting fucking on all sides, bro. Ripped to shreds. Damn. Into a cookout. They've also been known to plot on and consume unlucky birds. To be fair, if you can literally fly but get taken off the census by a mobile boulder, that's more about you than him. There was even that time India released 25,000 flesh-eating turtles to deal with the whole corpse population problem in the Ganges. It, it didn't work, by the way. But by far, the biggest culprit of covert carnivory are deer. The same deer that's usually the poster boy for the middle child of the food chain will occasionally get calories from something like a past tense bunny. And he just munching on that pitch like, like it's a piece of jerky. Uh, oh my God. His, right, his legs. Uh. A couple years ago, researchers wanted to see just what happens to the human body after the soul evacuates and basically set up these body farms to see how they decompose. As you can probably guess, photos would go viral featuring deer chewing on human bones, scavenging through the man-made remains like vultures. In 2015, researchers in North Dakota set up nest cams for a 24-hour live stream of the hatchlings, and not only did the footage catch deer enjoying an extremely late-term omelet, the servants actually outdid the foxes and weasels in that area, i.e. the ones you'd expect that from. And it wasn't just them being opportunity merchants, some of those deer went out of their way to get to them. Oh my god! were looking to study different species of birds and so trapped them using mist nets. Only for the unhinged ruminants to stroll in and eat the trapped and struggling birds alive right out of the nets. Oh well, my god, what the fuck? Not yo, I be feeling bad for deer. Not no fucking more. Not no fucking more. Thump is realizing Bambi would have 100% turned on Thumper if times got tough. It's now believed that a nutrient deficiency and a food shortage is really all it takes for an animal to go from herbivore to fern gore. Because one thing about animals, they don't care. A deer not finna pass down a chance for easy protein just because a textbook says they shouldn't. The twist is, almost every herbivore on Earth is facultated, meaning they'll take a page out of a predator's playbook if circumstances call for it. That's how you get normally docile horses treating baby birds like popcorn chicken. Oh my god. A horse ate a fucking ch Did you see how the fucking bird was screaming for it to let the fucking baby go? And somebody just sat there and recorded it. Didn't even help. He's eating the babies. Oh my god. Eating them like nuggets, like they fucking nuggets. Or that time cows in Australia were caught slurping pythons like fruit roll-ups. All because they were apparently feeding for phosphorus. Even giraffes. Yeah, they're not safe either. The verticality mm -hmm. merchants of the motherland will often feed off the bones of other animals. Not really swallowing them, but more like licking and sucking on it paws. So their saliva can <laughs> reach off nutrients like calcium and phosphorus. There have also been cases of the camel leopard cosplaying antelope snatching up birds to feed on their misfortune. So far, we've learned three things. One, most herbivores are about as vegetarian as their options. Two, baby birds are really the Kit Kat bars of nature. Oh, and three, now you see why Marty did everything in his power to get up out of there. His entire friend group would have had his hide if it got to that point. Which, of course, brings us to hippos. And this is where things get... Oh my god. ...complicated. At this point, it probably surprises exactly none of you that the four-legged assassination cetacean can have a hankering for flesh. Okay. Hippos have been seen eating carcasses and even resorting to cannibalism. Oh it's my complicated God. because for a while, we thought it was the same deal as before, just animals switching it up when their primary food source is compromised, which would make hippos facultative herbivores, as that word again. Okay. Except more and more scientists are coming to the conclusion that hippos eating meat aren't just scavenging or being opportunists, it's just hippos hippoing. As in, hippos will put themselves in a position to catch a body and subsequently feed on it. There have been reports of hippos murking livestock and seemingly predatory assaults. Oh my. Some even believe hippos will purposely park themselves in a river migrating animals have no choice but to cross, just so they can turn the casualties into calories. Some so they're like, they're not even like, they're, oh my god, what the fuck is this picture? Is this a fucking wildebeest munching on a fucking hippo that's being munched on by a fucking gay, what am I looking at? Oh my god. Sometimes that involves punking crocodiles out of food. And of course, you already know, hippos are not above feeding off friendly fire. All this means, hippos might not even be herbivores at all, but identify closer to the omnivore side of the spectrum. And that's why it's complicated, because now you're probably asking, what's the difference between a facultative herbivore and a straight up omnivore? And there's an answer. First of all, look at these, these there's like four or five niggas here 
just watching a hippo bully a whole family of big cats out of some fucking food. Do you know how big you gotta be for four to five big cats not to touch you? They like, yo, man, he eating our food, dog. What we gonna do? Nothing. You're gonna do nothing. You're gonna sit there and watch him eat your food and do nothing. You're probably asking, what's the difference between a facultative herbivore and a straight up- Matter of fact, there's one, two, three, four, five. There's six of them getting bitched by one single hippo. This one looking over like, y'all not gonna help us? Hippo <laughs> like, I dare you say so on oh, God. Omnivore, and there's an answer. I, I just really couldn't tell you. Like, you could say facultatives eat mostly plants, but can resort to meat as a fallback, where omnivores can normally go either way, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't just make that up on the spot. The moral of the story, it's way more complex than just putting labels on things and calling it a day. For example, this. That is a common diker, and it's an antelope less than two feet tall found in sub-Saharan Africa. And I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's the only antelope that regularly eats meat. Along with the shrubs and grasses you'd expect, the meal plan for this antelope undertaker often involves combing through corpses along with lizards, frogs, small rodents, and, you guessed it, baby birds. And because a good percentage of their diet requires other animals to diet with the tea silent, I'd call the diker an omnivore. But then, you got this, the tree-loving, pretty privileged acorn hoarders of the rodent world. Many I know you're not about to tell me that these motherfuckers is killers. Like, I know squirrels be eating shit, but I thought they would, like, there's no way they're going to kill something, right? I, you know, I know they're scavengers, but do they eat the dead or are they actually genuinely like, you know, I, I'm, I'm scared a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. We'll tell you that with a grocery list of mostly plants, fruits, nuts, and seeds, the squirrel is mostly herbivorous, but squirrels are also infamous for raiding. He's eating a baby bird. Look at this. Mm, what? My whole life is a lie. Eating bird's nest and turning creamy poultry into protein. And yeah, they do this a lot. A lot? On occasion, you'll see squirrels pack up okay. chickens and snakes. There was even a story of a pack of Russian squirrels ganging up on a stray dog and eviscerating the canine alive. Each. Excuse me? A pack of, uh, a wild pack of fucking squirrels ganged a dog in one? Keep me far away from them squirrels, dog. I ain't gonna lie. Keep me far away from them damn squirrels, dog. Hey, do you know 44% of y'all aren't subscribed? Go ahead and hit that button. And also go check out my gaming channel where I upload things like Spider-Man gameplay, Fortnite, Modern Warfare, older games, newer games, anything I can get my hands on, I'll play it. Go check it out. And yeah, enjoy the rest of the video, man. Scurrying off with their share of flesh. Yeah, not so cute now. They're not the only rodents that go rogue either. Normally, grass-eating prairie dogs have been known to savage baby ground squirrels, and on rare occasions, even eat the remains. Oh my Gays god. Curious. They do this by shaking the baby violently until their existence gets revoked. That's not even my worst rodent fact in the chamber. In 1995, a 43-year-old woman was found deceased in her flat, and with facial lesions and lacerations, and the fact that she was naked from the waist down, first responders thought it was a special victims unit kind of crime. Except it was later determined that she had expired to pneumonia. The desecration of her corpse was caused by her pet golden hamster. Not only did the pet feed on her vacated vessel, law enforcement would find the hamster's makeshift burrow containing human skin, flesh, and muscle tissue. But that shouldn't even really be a surprise since hamsters are known cannibals, but what you might not know is that sometimes it can be caused by corn. Researchers at the what? University of Strasbourg found this out by accident when they tried to figure out why the female hamsters under their care kept domering their own children. Through some likely traumatizing trial and error, they figured out that just a corn diet was even the hamster's missing vital crucial, crucial vitamins, specifically B3. They figured that out because once they added B3 back into their diets, the mother hamsters suddenly remembered how to mother. And the oh crazy my part God. is, that can happen to people. Vitamin B3 deficiency can lead to pellagra, a disease associated with diarrhea, dermatitis, dementia, and eventually dying. Oh my so god. Twist, an unbalanced diet can really lead to spawn wrecking rodents, and they're not the only known cannibals in nature. Chimpanzees are a great example. Oh god, look at them. Nope. Nope. I don't even need to know the rest. This is a purebred murderer. Murderer. Look at him. Animals don't care. Chimps have been known to de life their rivals and devour the body. 
Now to us, it's horrific and it makes chimps the spawn of Satan. To a chimp with no legal system or a sense of morality, just a will to live, it's common sense, murking your rival to protect your food supply and not letting easy protein go to waste. Okay. And before you judge, early humans reportedly made the brains of terminated children a somewhat regular part of their diet. Oh my God. Many people forget chimps aren't just violent pseudo vegans, they're legit predators. As in, they'll work together and coordinate attacks on prey like colobus monkeys, which, you know, Oh my it's god, look at how he snatched that shit up. Did you see that? Attacks on prey like colobus monkeys, which... Yeet, yeah, he snatched... Oh my god. No, isn't all that different from getting disemboweled by a pack of Olympic-level parkour zombies. They've also been known to hunt bush babies. That's a bush baby. By using spears. But with all the chimp carnage on this channel, them having carnivore tendencies should really be no surprise. The plot twist is, even the pacifists of the great apes can be on predatory timing. Most people, including me about two weeks ago, see orangutans as a good vibes hippie vegetarians of the primate world. Which is almost true, ginger apes eat mostly the stuff you'd expect, you know, fruits, figs, leaves, maybe some termites to go with bird eggs. But then okay. you got this, an orangutan tearing apart a slow loris. Oh my the god! Is known for being venomous, which orangs figured out how to neutralize by using the loris's natural weakness. Blunt force trauma in the form of a bite through the skull. Oh now, my god! Clear, a meat-eating man of the force is remarkably rare. But then again, chances are, before this video, a good number of y'all probably thought orangutans were only a threat to pieces of fruit. The same way a lot of people feel about toucans. Well, no shot, toucans out here eating. Which is actually what toucans are, the more you know. Has also been known to put bats on permanent leave from life. Yeah, that's the part Fruit Loops commercials ain't show you. They're also one of the many animals on the list of population control for baby birds. Oh, you thought that was a mammal thing? Well, two can play that game. Yo, who wrote this? I, I did. I wrote it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Birds in general will eat virtually anything that doesn't pack them up in the process. Oh my Seabers god. I've seen scarfing down squirrels with zero remorse. And I'm pretty sure there's at least one person in the world down a dog thanks to this flying antichrist. But the biggest example of feathery fuckery is what happens on Malchus Island. This is where we go full circle. This island off the coast of South Africa is a nursery for the thousands of Cape Gannets nesting here. Oh my god. Would probably be a good idea if someone ain't snitched to the pelicans because a population of white pelicans started traveling to Malgus just so they can swallow Gannet chicks whole, often right in front of their parents. And if one was unlucky enough to have both parents out at sea, that's just an easy lick for this attack on Titan Pterosaur. It These makers gotta drive by buffet. They gotta drive by buffet. Oh my God. It gets worse when you realize the half-digested, fully molested baby birds often end up being regurgitated for the pelican progeny to eat. And you thought they just ate fish. Predators come in many forms, and one island in the Pacific is home to one of the most unlikely. Because if you bleed on the wrong island, you can attract a pack of coconut crabs. Huh? Not only is this satanic manifestation- Oh yeah, I saw, I saw this picture, bro. And I was genuinely afraid. Genuinely. Station in the form of crustacean attracted to blood. They're more than enthusiastic scavengers. In a study done on Nikomararu Island, it took the homicidal hermit crabs a week to completely undress a pig carcass down to the bones. But with pinchers strong enough to humble a coconut, the killer crabs are more than capable of catching their own prey, especially when they can climb trees and ambush sleeping birds. Oh. This video was taken of a crab after it had snapped the hollow bones of a seabird. The oh. part you don't see is where a group of crabs arrived at an injured and incapacitated avian and proceeded to tear the bird apart. They've all Oh, I ain't gonna lie. You nip me, you going in a fucking seafood boil. I swear to God. I swear to God. You will be great in a seafood boil. I'm putting you in a pack. Perhaps arrived at an injured and incapacitated avian and proceeded I'm putting to you in a pack. the apart. They've also been known to make a meal out of rats, cats, and maybe even humans. Because a grisly theory on the disappearance of Amelia Earhart was that a cluster of crabs got to her before anyone else could. And the worst part, there's no guarantee she was relieved from life by the time they got to her. Because even though Mr. Krabs on creatine normally goes for fruit, just like most animals on Earth, they're only as vegetarian as their options. Hug your loved ones, stay oh my safe, God. Out there, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Oh, speaking of which, my eye's fine. I got LASIK, so I look like I lost the fight, but I also got the gift of sight, so it's all right. All right, peace out. Pelican, Pelwill, Pelican form. Against nature. <laughs> Do I can cook the fish, so yeah. What are you doing? Than you. Yeah, I guess. Oh, he's got a hook in him. That's wow. 
Yeah. We're saving the pelican. He's trying to still it's eat it. Okay. Good birdie. Are you okay? He's feeling much. Oh my god. Hey, W video though. Shout out Casual Geographic.